Welds in aluminium can fatigue and fail over time. That's why our panniers are riveted, like aircraft. Metal Mule. Engineered to be different. Uh, my name's Graham Field, and I've been given the honour of being the first ever person to have an under the visor update. This is a, my second under the visor interview. Why am I worthy? Well, I've been a huge fan of Adventure Bike TV since the early days. I've watched you grow, I've watched your hits and your viewers grow. I've shared your posts and uh, I think I deserve it. And here I am, deservedly taking my uh, recognition. I think it's been three years since we last spoke and a lot has changed. There's been two more books, there's been a few more rides and there's been some health issues and there's been a relocation. Uh, well, I turns out I had a broken back. I had a broken back for a year and a half. I didn't know it. And um, when we did our wheelie school, I had a broken back. When I did my iron butt challenge, I had a broken back. And uh, this year, one of my goals for 2017 was to try and get rid of this pain. I had continuing contradicting diagnoses and I finally got a uh, MRI and the surgeon said well you've got discus hernia yeah I know that you've got 17 millimeter displacement yeah I know that you've got a slip disc yeah I know that and you've got fractures did you say I've got fractures yeah your back is broken and if you don't do something about it soon you won't be able to walk so he said you need to consider an operation I said okay he said when will you know I said I know we'll do the operation this was on the Friday he said, well, um, he said, it's not urgent, we'll do it Wednesday. So I went in for tests on Wednesday and Thursday. I had a seven hour operation and uh, got six screws and two rods in my back. I'm totally fixed. The sciatic pain is gone. The posture is good. There's no pain at all. I can do all the things that I used to do without the pain and the complaining. Yeah, Eureka uh, book, which was the trip to Iraq and on to Azerbaijan, uh, came out. And also there's a new book called Different Natures, which are three different trips that all started in Colorado. One around Western States in 2001, another one up to Alaska in 2007, and a third one down to the southern tip of Mexico in 2012. Three different trips, sort of learning experiences, filling in the gaps and answering some questions that arose in the first two books. Um, and also those books have now just started to get published in the States, so In Search of Green Grass is now available in the US, Eureka is about to be, and we are now more sensibly spelling it with an E, because I thought it was so clever, my play on words of spelling Eureka with a U, because it was a U-turn, but in actual fact, if anybody put it in a Google search, they never found it, so we're now spelling it right. <laughs> I have, yes. Now she's a little older. I'm uh, prepared to acknowledge her existence. I don't think my private life had anything to do with adventure motorcycle riding. And so Madeline's come over to, um, to England for the very first time. And um, I won't say I wasn't nervous about it, but it's going pretty well. And if she's not enjoying it, she's really faking it well. <laughs> <laughs> the gnashing teeth and criminal tongues conspire against the odds. But they haven't seen the best of us yet. If you love me, let me go. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. And a little death. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I did. Um, when I, in 2013, when I went to Iraq, I drove, rode through Bulgaria and really liked it. And a couple of years ago, I was asked to go and do a presentation at uh, Horizons Mini Meet there. And I went back and it was just as good as I remembered. And so I ended up buying a house there. I now live in a small Bulgarian village. Uh, there's a motorcyclist bed and breakfast, I suppose you call it, called Motor Camp. And it attracts motorcyclists from all over the world. The wonderful thing about it, Bulgaria being where it is, no one there has started their trip. They've come up from Africa, down from the UK, across from the stands. And so you get such a diverse uh, bunch of riders, all of which are have got some stories to tell because they haven't just set off. So there's this wonderful, all through the summer, there's this constant mix of different people. So I've got this constant change in social life. I've got beautiful scenery, beautiful roads, lovely climate, and no regrets, two years. I'm struggling to learn Bulgarian, trying as hard as I can, and even dating my Bulgarian teacher, but it's still not quite coming that easily. <laughs> The, the uh, question of the weekend has been, when are you going to have another book? Everybody's waiting for a fourth book. I've got the material, I've got the title, I've got everything I need. 
I no longer live in Essex. When I lived in Essex, it was so easy to write. There was nothing else to do. Now I live in Bulgaria, I'm having so much fun. But I will, I will this winter sit down and hopefully by the spring of 2018, there will be some new material. <laughs> the, the problem with this contentment is that um, I'm not as driven to, uh, to ride, do journeys as I used to. I was always the one on the motorcycle with my packed panniers, leaving a home stay, waving off the people who had housed me and looking at this enviable look in their eyes as I went off to my next adventure. Now I'm the one who's doing the waving to the people who are leaving on their bikes and to be honest I'm quite content with that. Turning around and thinking right what am I going to cook for dinner? It's a, it's a great existence. Saying that there are always plans but after what happened with the Eureka trip where it all went pear-shaped I'm now a little bit superstitious about saying what I'm going to do in case it goes wrong. So, yes, there's always plans and there will be another trip. Our panniers have a double thick rim at the base, keeping damage from the inevitable bumps, scrapes and offs to the outside of the pannier. Metal Mule. Engineered to be different.